What's up guys, this is Bam Black Ops bringing you Head of the Class Episode 5, Snipers. Head of the Class is an analysis series that digs deep into the stats of Call of Duty. Episodes 1 through 4 you can catch on the Huppy Community channel. I've already covered assault rifles, SMGs, shotguns, and LMGs. Check the description for those videos if you want to check them out too. Some things I may cover in this episode will be easier to understand if you watch some of the previous episodes. In Head of the Class, I evaluate every gun, perk, killstreak, and attachment from Call of Duty Black Ops. To do this, I test out everything with tons of online play, as well as combat training for lag pre-testing. For the statistics, I completely ignore the in-game stats. For whatever reason, they are completely false. Instead, I use Den Kirsten stats. If you aren't aware, Den's been opening up the stats for the Call of Duty games of the PC version for a long time, which are identical to the console versions. His stats are perfect. Check out his website in the description as well. So with that backstory, let's jump into episode 5, Snipers. Now as you all know, the sniper gameplay in this game is probably the most difficult to handle of all the Call of Duty games. In my opinion, the snipers have never been a worse class. Since the modern Call of Duty games, meaning Call of Duty 4, World at War, and Modern Warfare 2, the snipers have always been a challenging but rewarding class to use. In Black Ops, this is not really the case. In almost all situations, I would recommend an assault rifle over a sniper, unless it's extremely long distance. The snipers just aren't a great choice. Now of course, they can be fun to use sometimes, and hitting that shot still feels pretty good, but it's just that now more than ever, it's harder and harder to actually hit that shot. This is due to the sway of the sniper when you first aim down the scope, and the random bullet spread when you first aim down the scope. Both of these things force you to aim for a much longer time, so once you line up the shot, oftentimes your target has already run behind cover, or worse, noticed you and took you out. Either that, or you rush your shot and miss. Sometimes you hit it, but more often than not, you're not going to hit a quick scope. Some love these new features, and some hate them. Usually the people that like these new changes didn't really run with sniper classes in any of the previous COD games. The people who hate these changes, well, they were the people who ran around with the sniper and are avid sniper fans. I am one of those guys, and uh, I'm not really a fan of the changes, but we have to make do with them. But if you still want to run with a sniper class, the best choice isn't really as obvious as it once was. With so many patches surrounding the snipers, things have changed and still can. So more than any of my episodes before, some of these things may change and the results of how the snipers play and which one I think is the best, well it might change in the end because they keep patching it over and over again. A few things we need to know about snipers. There are two main types of snipers, there are low power, low recoil sniper rifles, the Dragonoff and the WA-2000, and the high power, high recoil snipers, the L96A1 and the PSG-1. Remember, all snipers do the same damage at 70, 50 with the suppressor. The difference is the damage multipliers. We'll get into that in a second. Let's start with the Dragonoff versus the WA-2000, both of which are semi-automatic. The Dragonoff is a one-hit kill in the chest, neck, and head. With a suppressor, it's a one-hit kill in the head only, and this is true with all sniper rifles, so I don't really recommend suppressors, uh, unless it's hardcore, which is then it's a pretty good idea. The recoil is reasonable. It is tied with the best recoil of all the snipers, but it does have very low center speed. Center speed is the time that it takes for your gun to point back to the middle of the screen where you were originally aiming after every shot. The higher the center speed, the better. The major advantage for the Dragonoff is that it has 10 bullets in each magazine. The WA-2000, we'll just call it the WA-2K from here on out, it has the same multipliers as the Dragonoff, one hit kill in the chest, neck, and head. The recoil is also the same as the Dragonoff, however, the center speed is much, much higher. This means I can take the second shot on target much quicker than I can with the Dragonoff. The WA-2K has six bullets per magazine, one more than the L96A1 and the PSG-1, but four less than the Dragonoff. Next up, let's look at the high power, high recoil snipers, the L96A1 and the PSG-1. The L96A1 is a one hit kill in the abdomen, chest, neck, head, and upper arm, from around the elbow and up. This means shoulder shots are one hit kill, and this is not the case with most of the snipers in previous COD games. So the L96A1 is technically the most powerful sniper in any Call of Duty game. Well, unless we want to include the M40 with the ACOG from COD 4. The L96 has 5 bullets per clip. The L96 is a very hard recoil up and to the right. Of course it's a bolt action sniper, so the first shot better be on target because you may not have a second shot. 
It seems like the boat animation itself takes longer than in previous COD games. I jam this gun much more often than I did any other. By jamming, I mean that after I take the shot, I often start sprinting or toss a concussion grenade or something like that. And when I get ready to line up the next shot, I realize that I still haven't performed the actual bolt action animation. This can often get me killed. I often snipe in different Call of Duty games and I use the M40 or Intervention and I don't jam it nearly as often. So I checked back at the fire rate statistics on Den Kirsten's site for the two sniper rifles and found that the M40 and Intervention both had higher rounds per minute, higher fire rate, than the L96A1. Those stats prove that what I was feeling in the game is true. With the L96A1, it takes longer to take that second shot than with the M40 and Intervention in COD4 and MW2 respectively. The PSG-1 is a semi-automatic sniper rifle. It's easy to compare this to the Barrett 50 cal. It's a one-hit kill in the abs, chest, neck, and head, not in the arms like the L96A1. The recoil is very similar to the L96, it's high and to the right, however it's not quite as hard and the center speed is very high. It's the best center speed of all the snipers, so your second shot can be lined up accurately quicker than with any other sniper. It also has 5 bullets per clip. It's probably the best sniper to run around with the ACOG due to its power and great center speed. So let's recap, which low power, low recoil sniper is the best? They both have the same recoil stats, but the WA-2K has much better center speed, making it the more accurate choice. The Dragunov does have 10 bullets per magazine, so you get a lot of ammo. However, for some reason, when you attach an ACOG to the Dragunov, the raise and drop time of the gun increases. What does this mean? It takes longer to switch to your secondaries, and it also takes longer to throw tactical grenades. This is a shame because although the ACOG Dragunov isn't really the most effective choice, it does seem like it could benefit from being more of a battle rifle instead of a sniper rifle. But alas, when you attach the ACOG to make the sniper a better mid-range and close-range gun, it forces you to be less effective at that range because tossing stuns and switching pistols takes a lot longer, and this is obviously uh, very helpful for close quarters. In the end, the grid accuracy allows the WA-2K to outperform the Dragunov. The WA-2K is the best in my opinion. One important thing to remember is that the WA-2K cannot be used like the M21 EVR or WA-2K from MW2. You can't use your trigger figure or cheat with a modded controller because Treyarch decided to put a cap on the fire rate of the snipers. So you can't spam the trigger like you could in previous COD games, and this also goes for the PSG-1. Alright, what about the ones we actually care about? Which high power, high recoil sniper is the best option? When comparing these two snipers, there are two things to take into consideration. Do you want power or fire rate? The addition of the one hit kill to the arm is a huge advantage for the L96A1. But with the PSG-1, you can take the second shot so much quicker if you missed or even got a hit marker on your first shot. I've always loved the feeling of bolt action snipers. Whether it's the best choice or not, the bolt actions always felt like the best sniper rifle in my hands. And this is true for many players, but in Black Ops, it's not the case for me. The L96, due to many changes to the snipers, it just doesn't feel right. The PSG-1 semi-auto powers and high center speed make it the best sniper in the game. It's got great power. Some may even say that the PSG-1 sways less when aiming down the scope. That's not the easiest thing to notice, and I don't, don't tell a huge difference, but I think it is a valid point. So if you want to give sniping a go in Black Ops, try the PSG-1 with either ACOG, extended mags, or variable scope. As far as perk goes, Ghost, even though many of you hate it, is a good option. You're already at a disadvantage while using the sniper. Being invisible is very helpful. The second slot can be used for three things in my opinion, either steady aim because it can be very helpful for no scopes and close quarters, sled of hand for those quicker reloads, remember the pro version won't allow you to zoom in faster with the snipers, or scout. Scout allows you to hold your breath longer which can be helpful for very long distance shots, but the pro version is very useful. It allows you to switch to your secondary really really fast. This is great for taking guys out with your pistols, or even picking up an assault rifle or something and being able to pull it out just as fast as a pistol. For the last perk, Ninja is the best option. Again, you don't want to make a lot of noise with the sniper. Your best option is catching enemies off guard, and Ninja is very helpful for that. So that is it for episode 5. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to comment below with your own thoughts on the snipers and the head of the class series. I will really appreciate it. If you like this video and haven't checked out the others yet, check the description below for those episodes. If you like my content, please check out my channel, youtube.com slash A lot of stuff similar to this. 
Thank you so much for watching guys, I really hope you enjoyed it and I hope it gave you some great tips for how to use a sniper a little bit more effectively in Call of Duty Black Ops. I'm glad I could finally get this episode out there because this sniper episode took a long time to make and I had a lot of technical difficulties in between so I'm glad I could finally get it to you guys. Uh, this does mark the final episode of Head of the Class for Call of Duty Black Ops, although I do plan on picking it up again for Modern Warfare 3 and hopefully I'll be able to cover all of the primaries as well as the secondaries and the equipment and perks and kill streaks and all that kind of stuff. So hopefully I'll be able to do the whole thing exactly what I wanted to do with Black Ops. I just got held back with some things. So hopefully this series will come back even better in Modern Warfare 3. Please stay tuned to that. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all later.